Patch 10.1.7 has just dropped and a recent batch of hotfixes has shaken up the PvP meta. With a new healing king in town, the solo shuffle ecosystem has been transformed. Today, we'll guide you through the winners and losers of the latest patch in Season 2. Before we get into it, we want to take a moment to remind you of the 400 rating gain guarantee available only at scalecap.com. That's right, for as low as $6.99 a month, we guarantee that you'll see rating gains, and if you don't, then you'll get a full refund, no questions asked. With a subscription to Skill Caps, you gain access to class guides that guide you step by step on how to deal rank 1 level damage, and how to survive and crowd control just like the pros you watch on Twitch. We also have a massive library of nearly 2,000 arena commentaries that teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skill Cap members also gain access to the premium section of our Discord server, where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals in recent months, so if you want to start seeing immediate results just like these ones, be sure to click on the discount link below right after this. For now though, let's get back to the video. We typically start these videos with the melee winners, but healers have undergone so many significant changes compared to ranged or melee that they are single-handedly shaping the meta. So without further ado, we would like to introduce the biggest winner of the patch, the S-Tier Restoration Druid. Restoration Druids have received significant buffs in the form of some long-lost friends. Treants have made a comeback, and they are stronger than ever before, rocketing Restoration Druid all the way from B-Tier to S-Tier. Through using the new Grove Guardian's talent, Restoration Druids can summon a low mana cost NPC that will cast Nourish for 15 seconds. Think of it like an incredibly strong heal over time effect that cannot be purged. Treants not only allow Restoration Druids to do incredible healing, but also make them more mana efficient, less punished by purges, and even can use them to avoid CC by standing on them to soak a hunter's trap. The second biggest healer winner is Restoration Shaman, thanks to buffs to their main heals, Riptide and Healing Stream. These buffs allow Restoration Shamans to focus more on their utility, which is especially powerful in caster lobbies, where they can shut down and harass most range through Grounding Totem and Shear. Despite these changes though, Restoration Shamans continue to struggle in deep dampening and thus won't be moving out of our A tier. Next, Fistweaver Monks are also winners in this patch, thanks to the declining popularity of Holy Paladins and the rise of Augmentation Evokers, who provide the Ebon Might buff that increase a Fistweaver's output, both through their damage and healing. Fist Weavers can also be notoriously difficult to crowd control, as them being in melee range in an uncoordinated solo shuffle game often causes them to take random bits of damage and break crowd control effects, something that's particularly good when up against hunters and mages, both of which are quite popular at the moment. Fist Weavers also perform quite well against Restoration Druids, as their high damage forces Druids to focus on healing rather than using Cyclone. Our final winning healer are Disciplined Priests, who received a strong buff to Penance Healing. Unfortunately, this buff is not enough to significantly improve Disciplined Priests position in the meta, as it still has weak defensive cooldowns, poor mana, and terrible throughput. As a result, Disciplined Priest is only successful in very short, non-dampening games, leaving them in the C tier. To wrap things up, here are our new healer rankings for 10.1.7. Holy Paladins remain in the S tier, but they have been overshadowed by Restoration Druids. No longer the champ of damp and winning every game on mana, Holy Paladins can often lose to Restoration Druids in battles of attrition. Holy Paladins remain strong healers, however, due to their utility spells such as Sacrifice, Blessing of Protection, and Lay on Hands, which can recover teammates from misplays and excel in melee lobbies where opponents lack purge. Moving down to the A plus tier, we have Fist Weavers joining Holy Priests. Resto Shamans then remain in the A tier, with Preservation of Ochres moving down from the A plus tier to join them. Although Preservation has performed quite well throughout the season, the lack of buffs has caused them to fall behind other healers, which have more recently received buffs of their own. In the B tier, we've moved the regular casted Mist Weaver down a tier, as the rise of Augmentation of Ochres has seen Fist Weaver set a clear gap between itself and the caster variant of the class. And finally, we've moved Disc all the way down to the C tier. With the healers covered, let's move on to the melee winners and how the melee meta has evolved. Thanks to the rise of Restoration Druids and Augmentation Evokers, we are moving Retribution Paladins up to the S tier. Retribution Paladins are proving very tough to kill currently, and when you pair their utility with Resto Druids, you can create a nearly impenetrable wall of defenses. Offensively, Retribution Paladins are also fantastic when facing Restoration Druids. This is because their damage is tied to the Paladin themselves, meaning they can easily force healing on one target with Crusade and swap to the next, pushing the Druid into overdrive as they try to hot up their next teammate. Similarly, Subtlety Rogues are also performing better this patch, as they are no longer gatekept by facing a Holy Paladin every match, whose plethora of cooldowns made it difficult to finish the game. With Restoration Druids as the new kings of the meta, Sub Rogues can punish targets without hots and even kill the Druids themselves to find victory. 
The final melee winner in this meta shift is Assassination Rogue, which has been popping up more and more frequently. Assassination is particularly good against Restoration Druids because it can deal high sustained and cleave damage, making it difficult for the Druid to heal two targets. Shiv is also incredibly potent in dampening, serving as its own kill window. However, Assassination isn't without its challenges. It still dies very easily, and with many players still playing Augmentation Evoker and Holy Paladin, you need a miracle to get a good death mark off when up against those classes. Having looked at the winners, let's see two specs moving down our tier list. Windwalkers are affected negatively by the rise of Restoration Druids. This is because they can be easily controlled on their burst via clones, roots, bashes, or even a vortex, resulting in a ton of lost damage. Monks are also not great at killing through Resto Druid hots, as their consistent damage is often too insignificant compared to the Restoration Druids throughput. To make matters worse, with so many elementals, augmentations, and warriors on the ladder, Windwalker Monk's goes can be shut down by many meta classes. Furthermore, these classes are very hard to kill due to their high armor and damage reduction. The other solo shuffle melee loser for the patch are Outlaw Rogues. Just after things were looking up for our pirate friends, Outlaw Rogues have the exact same problem as Windwalkers, where their damage just isn't high enough to deal with Restoration Druid healing. Despite their strong crowd control chains, Resto Druid Hots and Treants are still ticking, rendering the Outlaws setup and consistent damage useless. Like Windwalker, Outlaw also struggles to kill high armor classes, and there are quite a lot of them in the current meta. So to recap, we have Retribution Paladins taking the throne for the S tier melee, swapping places with Windwalkers in the A plus tier, we also see Assassination Rogues bumped up to the A tier, swapping places with Outlaw in the B tier. Everything else remains the same. And finally, we'll finish things off with our ranged winners, and boy do we have a lot of them when Resto Druids are around. Our first winner is Augmentation of Ochres, who has been flying up to S tier thanks to their incredible utility and surprising damage output. The Ebon Might rework has turned out to be a buff for Solo Shuffle, as it gives Augmentation of Ochres more carry potential by increasing their own damage rather than their teams. Right now, it seems like Augmentation is just devastation pumped with steroids. While its scoreboard damage might not be as high, its burst windows are absolutely nasty when lined up with other offensives. Augmentation is also very strong into Restoration Druids, as they can purge their hots all at once through the PvP talent Scouring Flame, which can be devastating for Resto Druids to handle. Finally, Augmentation synergizes well with just about every meta class, increasing their damage and making them tanky enough to win in almost any lobby. Next up are the Elemental Shamans, who are also moving up into the S tier. This specialization deals so much damage that it is the go-to class for the entire cast of iRobot, aka players looking to get caught in the next ban wave. Elemental Shamans perform incredibly well against the other S tier ranged classes because they can avoid damage with ease due to grounding, shear, and all of their damage being instant which allows them to hug a pillar while dealing damage compared to the other ranged classes who have to cast. Previously, Holy Paladins were keeping Elementals down due to how strong Cleanse the Weak can be into Flame Shock, but with Restoration Druids overflowing the ladder, Holy Paladin games are becoming more rare. The only downside for Elemental Shamans is that they did get nerfed on the Volcanic Surge one-shot cheese, but realistically, this build was never necessary to begin with. Our next winners are MM Hunters, who have also shot up to the S tier. This is largely due to the other popular meta classes being Cloth, Leather, and Mail, which Marksman's high physical damage of Aimed Shot and Rapid Fire chews through. Marksman is also exceptionally strong at dealing with Restoration Druids, as they can take the Tranquilizing Darts talent and make their hots a lot less effective, or simply burst so hard that the hots have no time to heal the target back up. As for crowd control, Marksman is a self-sufficient killing machine who can scatter trap healers without much assistance from their team creating CC chains of their own with a follow-up silence. While they can struggle into some high armor lobbies, Mark's Hunters are proving to be the biggest threat into some of the other high tiers. Speaking of which, we're making a slight adjustment to mages by bumping Arcane Mage up to the A plus tier to join Fire and Frost. There's an argument to be made that Arcane and Fire are S tier, but with the popularity of Hunters and Elemental Shamans, mages are one of the more challenging specs to play in the solo bracket. Adding to that, the increase of Restoration Druids is a bit conflicting for our wizard friends. While Resto Druids and Mages synergize incredibly well, both offensively and defensively, Mages can struggle when playing against Resto Druids, which can be harder to CC compared to other healers. This is why at higher MMR, Mages opt to play very passive and can be seen kiting and pillaring all game into deep dampening, which is a strategy definitely needed to stay competitive into the Mage slaying Ellie Shamans and Marks Hunters. Speaking of which, the last minor winners of the patch are Affliction and Devastation Evoker, who although being the only two ranged to receive buffs, have not really become any stronger. Affliction Warlocks received a buff to Unstable Affliction's Backlash damage, so it now hits for 250 to 300k each time it is dispelled. However, this buff is not enough to move Affliction up the rankings. 
As the specialization is very squishy and its kill condition of casting a lot and winning through rot pressure does not work well in solo shuffle, especially considering that warlocks aren't tanky enough to survive into the late game. As for Devastation, they have received a buff on Disintegrate damage, which actually does hit hard now. However, just like Affliction, this specialization is still super squishy and needs nothing short of a rework to be moved up the rankings. With the winners out of the way, it's time to discuss the ranged losers of the patch, starting with Boomkins. Balanced Druids have dropped down to the a tier because their main win condition, the unhealable second incarnation, can actually be healed by Restoration Druids. Additionally, Balanced Druids cannot root beam Restoration Druids, and their tendency to stand 40 yards away and heal makes it difficult to crowd control with a 25-yard Cyclone. While Balanced Druids are still powerful, their dominance has waned slightly, but are still highly competitive in the meta. Shadow Priests are also taking a well-deserved plunge down the rankings to sit in A tier. Shadow now does very weak damage and healers have become so powerful that their CC Chain of Silence and Stun just isn't enough to finish out the game on their own. Adding to this, the popularity of Mark's Hunters and high damage melee has made Shadow Priest feel very limited, where it definitely struggles to survive after nerfs to its defensives earlier this expansion. To wrap things up, here is our new ranged meta for Season 2. Right now, the S tier is loaded with bangers. Marksmanship Hunters and Ellie Shamans are seeing huge jumps in representation across the entire ladder, while Augmentation remains a staple at high MMR. Boomkins are taking a step back as the other casters are shining a bit brighter in the Restoration Druid meta. Athlete is performing a little bit better due to the backlash effect, but it's not enough to rank them higher. Shadow Priests are underperforming on all fronts, and Devastation is still in dire need of more than a few percentage damage buffs. As always, these tier lists are collaboration with Rank 1 and Professional players. Your mileage may vary depending on rating, but we try to adjust our data to reflect every bracket. And if you're interested in gaining 400 rating risk-free this season, check out the discount link below. Skillcapped is the only place that promises results with our rating gain guarantee, ensuring that you will hit your rating goals while using our website. Not only do you get access to thousands of videos, but also Rank 1 player support in our revolutionary Ask a Pro forum. Every season, Skillcapped helps players just like you reach their potential. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description for an exclusive discount offer. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. As always, we'd like to thank you all for watching. See you soon.